Everyone, hi, my name is Zorg Alger, and you're watching Algang. If you particularly liked the Cloud Strife character breakdown that I have done recently, I want to let you know that there's actually more of that that will be coming in the future. So the best way to be notified next time that I upload a character breakdown of a popular video game is to subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. A few weeks ago, we received Ben Ert and Sam Alessia to do a full breakdown of their latest collaboration, Flathead vs. Deadeye. And you can find the full interview here on our YouTube channel if you want to see it. But Sam actually shared quite a lot of tips and secrets as to how he likes to go about texturing characters using Mari. And I thought it would be very interesting to post that independently of the rest of the interview. So if that's the only thing that you're interested in, stay tuned because here is Sam Alessia with his tips and secrets as to how to texture using Mari. Enjoy. So when I, I approach uh, materials and creatures, one of the the things I I start doing is asking questions to the the asset. Um, where do you live? How do you live? How do you hunt? What do you eat? Uh, when you hunt, how do you do it? Um, have you been in battles? Have you, are you a newborn? Like all these questions that will help me inform a little bit of the, the story elements I'll be putting into it. And then the, the biggest thing I asked, even some art directors sometimes, uh, when they're trying to, to figure out what, what to do with the creature. Uh, and I did this, I remember, uh, with the, uh, the Hydralisk, um, that I did for StarCraft. I, I went to the art, art director and I asked him if, if this were, was your pet, like a little cute dog, and you were to pet the Hydralisk, how does it feel on your hand? And uh, I remember he got super excited, and, and I, I was super excited with him, because then it just got a really nice conversation going of, oh, like this and like that, and he's... Yeah, and so it, 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 a very simple question like that, it will inform you if it's a very rough surface, if it's bumpy, if it's slimy, if it's, you know... Um, and that will, will start driving a little bit of the material. I, I I always also use inspiration from films and and concepts and and stuff like that, but I I I make sure as I'm dialing my materials and I'm doing my texture, I always look to the reference of real life because um, that's what you want to be matching to. Um, and so I use parts of uh, these guys on on everything. So I use mouths from dogs. Um, I used. Uh, Transitions from octo uh, Octopus for uh, his skin. So a lot of the transitions that you see on, on Deadeye, um, they're, they're from uh, Octopus. So you, you see them all over him. What's up yeah. with that dog mouth? Can you go back to that? Like the dog <laughs> mouth that was there. What the hell? Like, is that normal? It's a, or? no, I, it's, it's a little bit of, I think it's, a, uh, this is the, the rough part about texturing. <laughs> when you start, you need to start looking for some infections and gum right. diseases and stuff like that. So I'm drawing ideas from many sources, uh, and I'm I'm trying to use uh, as much as I can from different animals and creatures, and, uh, and as I put them together. But yeah, so so this is something I do for every character and every asset I I work on. I I, I always collect reference before starting to start getting ideas on, on what I want to do with the different parts of uh, of the creature. On the UV side of things, since Ben Ben already touched on that, I I don't have to go too deep on it, uh, but the basic idea is that um, I want I want to have something um, I'm sorry uh, as clean as possible on the on the UVs um, so that I can also uh, copy things from one uh, one panel to the other in Mari. So Mari, I can either flip stuff in the middle from left to right, right to left. Um, uh, top to bottom, but I can also just grab a whole panel and just copy over what I'm doing. So this is the biggest tip someone gave me when I was starting uh, to texture paint, and is the the best tip I can give you today. Uh, when you're doing painting creatures like this and, and and monsters, don't try and paint all the detail and everything at once. Um, paint half of the creature, flip it over, and then you can do all the asymmetric detail afterwards on on the side that you just you just pasted over and. Uh, you get a quick pass at, at everything. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, you guys haven't seen Deadeye on this uh, lighting scenario, um, but I, I like dialing all my materials uh, in a neutral lighting environment. 
um, so they don't get contaminated by by a lot of blues or reds or greens. Um, and so that's when when I'm comfortable with the with all the stuff. That's when I actually start uh, switching light rigs. And at that point, we already started talking about uh, what kind of light scenario they would be in all the time. Uh, and Ben passed me this this light rig, and I just continued, you know, uh, working with with him on on that light rig. I I work on it when when Ben is done with the UVs. That's when I I feel comfortable to start putting work on 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 this guy. Um, material wise, I can start a little bit earlier, uh, and I I think I I did for subsurface and and some of that stuff. The more time I got to spend on him, the the more detail I could put on him. And at some point, Ben and I had to decide to just. Uh, let it go. <laughs> yeah. um, this is the version where he was going to be like blind on his eyes, um, but we thought he looked cuter with the black eyes. <laughs> and let me show you guys some uh, quick Mari stuff. Do we yeah, have let's time? do it. Oh Are yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm keeping all of you here until like midnight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Mr. Deadeye. Mari, Substance, there's always a question, which one to do it on, which one is the best? Really, it's a, it's a, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages on both. Um, and really, you could, you could do any of these creases or any other creature in, in either of the software. Um, the, there's a, an advantage on the Mari side that, um, that is, is why it's, it's used mostly in, in films. It's because it, it can... It's it's pretty good at handling very heavy geo. Um, it doesn't slow down as much. So you guys, you guys can see this this moving around, and it's, it's it's pretty good with a crazy ton of layers going on. Um, so what I'll do is show you guys really quickly like the build up on him and how I I put like uh, a bunch of this detail together. So you can see how it's uh, how it came together. So this is some of the sketching that I'm doing uh, on him early on to start getting an idea of volume, color, transitions, uh, values, all that kind of stuff. And from this, I start deriving uh, additional detail on him. Um, and if you guys uh, are wondering how I'm doing this, I rarely paint anything by hand. Rarely paint anything by hand, uh, unless it's like masks or, or things like that. So I'm using images all the time to to project uh, a, a lot of these, this detail. Um, and so I can show you guys. So this is an image I'm using uh, to quickly sketch um, this guy. Um, and what I'm doing is using sections of him uh, because it doesn't need to be high resolution. It's not going to be the final image, but I'm using sections of him um, to start uh, coloring him really quickly. So I'll show you guys how I do that and then we'll move on. Um, at this stage, uh, I'm just trying to get some quick reads on some of his shapes. And you guys will see me switching between um, light mode, shaded, and flat all the time. And that's something I like doing just to prove really quickly what I'm, what I'm trying to paint. Um, and for those Mario users out there, uh, that's F1, F2, F3. And so what I'm doing here is literally quickly, like you'll see, Trying to get some of these colors in, so that I can get some nice reads of uh, shapes and and uh, different values coming in into him. And all I'm doing is literally this the whole time. I'm just rotating the image, projecting it, pasting it, um, just so that I can I can start getting different values on on him. Because if I do this by hand, it's going to take forever. Um, if I let just the occlusion drive this. Um, it's it's only going to go into the the crevices and stuff like that. So um, I do a pass with Mbok and 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 curvature and all that, but I still do this uh, to get a lot of my custom feel for what I'm trying to do on on the creature. Sorry that I'm talking at like a hundred miles per hour. Oh no, it's fine. Uh, people can just slow down the video after the fact if they want. To. <laughs> yeah. The other the uh, the other thing you want <clears throat> to have a good amount of is, is memory because uh, oh, yeah, I think maybe. I have 128 right now uh, on my machine uh, and it can handle this pretty well. Um, but if you have uh, 16, 
it's, it might start struggling 32 it, it's still okay it's still good like a lot of studios still use 16 and 32 um but when Crazy. the assets are getting very heavy very big <laughs> i need i need as much as possible for for memory definitely yeah which is hard um, to so, come by, right? If you get by trying to get a 3080 <laughs> or something these days. Yes. Yeah. So even in adding uh, color on this guy, you, you can start seeing that I'm only adding it on specifically where I want to see color. I'm not adding like a blanket red on every crevice on, on him. Um, and then whenever I do a different feel or material on him, I split it. So the, the belly is supposed to be soft and... and and all that, and uh, his mask is here. I do the uh, the texturing part of it, and then uh, I use a mask to control how to reveal it. So, show you guys his stuff. So that's what's revealing the the mask right now for him. Um, transitions are really important on creatures, and uh, for my transitions, I I use a bunch of stuff that I prepare. Uh, from like walls and uh, things like this, uh, I just con con contrast it up and start making masks out of it that I use to to do my transitions. Whenever the material is going on uh, from one surface to the other, I like transitioning it. Uh, a lot of the things in nature have transitions. Everything, I, most of it has transitions. If you look at um, like a snow, uh, snowy mountain, uh, it usually doesn't just go from snow to the river, there's a, a nice transition of the snow, the rocks underneath, but there's always grass growing because when it starts melting, it, it you know it's, it's watering the grass. And then if you get you if you get dry, it can start getting dry at the bottom of that. Transitions into rocks, which transition into the river. So there's always transitions in nature and 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 creatures. So uh, it's something I, Ben and I also talked a, a lot about on on how to transition things on on these guys. Nice. And the the craziest transition on him, you'll see it. It's on the on the legs. Uh, it's coming up pretty soon. Oh yeah. Uh, so everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, all the stuff. Uh, I just do like a, a some some base stuff. Um, and and you'll rarely see, um, like an actual, uh, like flat color. Um, and so you'll see uh textures that I'm using that I buy from Mega Scans or. Um, things like that, you know, uh, show you some disgusting stuff, <laughs> um, stuff like this, you know, um, just to use as a base for, for things. Is that baloney? Yes. <laughs> I use this a lot for, for gums and, and, uh, raw skin. But what is and it? I'm not sure, actually. I'm sure it's baloney. I'm not sure. <laughs> and, uh, and then I have like the, the mask. Uh, driving uh, the different the different veins on him. I do as, as far as you guys are seeing. I as as, uh, as you can see, I'm not honing in and detailing right away. I'm I'm doing like a, a broad pass first, and then and then I start detailing little by little and get closer and closer and closer. Um, this here. So this is some of the transition <laughs> stuff that starts coming in. That was from the octopus picture, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so what I'm using here is pretty much a, an octopus uh, to transition uh, a lot of the stuff. Let me see if I can hmm. pull out that image for you guys. So this is the guy. So as you can see, there's a lot of his stuff that you see on his skin. And I'm using that to transition uh, from rough to, to soft. Um, and this is this is my my sketch for how the black areas will be will be looking on him. So what I'm I'm doing with a lot of my projection um, is trying to use parts that are the the most flat on it without too much shadows and lights. But uh, lucky enough, like the octopus is underwater, so there's not <laughs> there's not a lot of uh, lighting going on on him. I can get some really nice flat uh, stuff. And so whenever I see stuff like this. Then I, I can use that on on very specific spots to uh, to get some some different effects on on him that mm. you see on the fingers and, and things like that. That's really cool. I yeah. I I rarely paint 
light on my on my model on my texture which in gaming it's pretty different sometimes you you want some of that lighting painted in um and the reason for that is because if it, it reacts way more realistic to to light well, when you have it uh flat but yeah i i i generally i use stuff as overlays and and different blending modes in in mari just like you would in photoshop um, just to start getting rid of some of that lighting and just using parts of what I'm projecting. Because uh, as you see, like I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep like putting stuff on top and, and on top and on top. Um, so you rarely see the actual base of of what I painted. Mister Dead Eye is going through puberty, so he has some dimples going on. Nice. He's a very young creature. Um, I also start playing with the idea of uh, doing. Um, just some of the the uh, a skin rash that he has, and and you see a little bit of uh, of of that on him on some areas like this. So he has a little bit of a skin disease going on, um, and it's just little story details that I'm I'm adding to him to to show some of the the damage he's gotten in the wild, and you know he's not a pristine creature. The funny thing is, I I rarely rarely use a shader in Mari to look at my final result um, which in substance is on at all times you, you're seeing how the bump is affecting how the the roughness is affecting how the um, this the specular is affecting um, I rarely look at that um, look at it like that in, in in Mari I'm usually looking at very flat channels uh, it's just the way I, I I learned and it's a really good thing to know um, I've seen uh, a few artists that have only done Substance before that when they come to Mari, they struggle uh, on that because um, since Substance was doing all that stuff for them, they when they're asked to change something specifically that a director wants or something, they, they don't know how to approach it. Um, so it's good to know what is actually happening when you paint white on, on an area and what happens when you paint uh, black on an area. Um, this is the roughness patch on him, so uh, pass on him. So obviously, uh, since his roughness, not glossiness, it the the white will be rougher, the black will be shinier. So anything uh, really really black will be super shiny, like his mouth, around his eyes, things like that. You know that you want that that wet look. He wants wet and disgusting in the mouth, um, and so all the black stuff on him uh, is being uh, driven by. Uh, a mask, and so I can connect that in multiple channels and and have that mm. like that. Um, his crazier maps are like his SSS map. Um, this is something where I think uh, I was I was training uh, Ben on on SSS painting and and all that that kind of stuff. Um, this is one of the layers for SSS. Uh, and this is my other layer. You'll see it in a second. And we don't have to go too deep into this stuff, but just, just showing you guys some of the, the passes that I had to paint on these guys. And uh, what is this right now? So this is what you will see underneath the, the skin. There's two, oh. uh, two levels of uh, SSS on him. Um, and so the deeper you go, it starts changing uh, on him. And so this is a little bit more shallow uh, on him. And then the other one is uh, deeper on him where you start seeing the, the raw uh, muscle and, and blood and, and all that kind of stuff. Different studios also use uh, three sometimes. Uh, they use like epidermal, subdermal, and then they, it all depends on what they're trying to achieve and the look and, and all that kind of stuff. But for him, this, this worked out pretty well for us. The other thing I do is um, I separate my my displacements, and this is the part where um, I'm sketching for Ben as we're going back and forth. Uh, this is my my broadest pass on the displacement. This is the biggest shapes that will be happening on him. And uh, let me show you guys. If I'm asking another question for SSS, actually. Um, yeah, go ahead. Do you also have a map that controls the uh, the depth for the subsurface scattering effect? Yes, yes. So this uh, this is on him. What I'm I'm doing. He's so subsurfacey overall 
uh, because it's such a like a, a creature, creature devoided by light that he has a lot of subsurface going on. So uh, I have a bit of a blanket uh, thing going on on him, but there are definitely uh, parts like the tip of the tentacles and the mouth and, and things that are um, are a bit tougher. Uh, sorry, a bit, a little bit more see through on him. So the wider it is, the more subsurface he is going to be looking. Hmm. And as you guys see here, I'm using some of the cavity, uh, the curvature maps from from Ben, just as a starting point, and then I paint custom stuff on on top of that. Um, but yeah, so that's what you get to see on on him when he's uh. So like that material change is what I'm trying to achieve on on what I'm showing you guys. Uh, something from slimy to to rough. Uh, and this is the my detail pass for uh, the skin on him. So you can see all the stuff that I'm trying to sculpt in Mari instead of uh, using ZBrush. Which is displacement in the end, right? All the displacement, yeah. Cool. The, the hardest part for me is always fingers because they're cylinders. And so uh, since I'm projecting a lot of this stuff, I have to be spinning. So arms are pretty difficult as well because I have to be spinning a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and projecting stuff around instead of just the back where I just, just blanket project uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, and so that I not only has fingers and arms, but he has some long legs, a tail, and four tentacles that are all cylinders. That so the fun. projection yeah. time on him <laughs> was insane. <laughs> This is like a, a very tough asset to to project. It's, it's so as you guys saw, like the, I don't. There's no w one image that I use to project the whole thing, and it just looks good at, right off the bat. I'm I'm going bit by bit. I first do the the white skin, and then I'm working on the black skin, and then I'm working on the transitions, and then the rough areas and the wet areas. So I little by little, I I layer the roughness, the the displacement, all that stuff. It comes one at a time. Because if you try to do everything at once, it's it's too much. Uh, you won't you won't get the right the right stuff. So we shoot the stuff out. Um, I need to clean up some of the textures that were shot out, but I think um, <laughs> Ben, I think if that I is around twelve hundred textures in mm -hmm. the end. Yeah, exported textures. Yeah, he has he has quite a lot of stuff because we also um, something we ended up doing. Uh, highly suggested for people that are, are don't have a, a great machine like we do is combining uh the maps so this is a combination of uh, sss value uh specular value and roughness um and so in the red channel we just make an rgb mask out of this and then in maya we we split it and, and call it in uh so this is the specular value on on him uh the the brighter it is the more shiny he's gonna be the the darker, the the less shiny, the met, the less reflective. Um, you grab the roughness that you guys just saw, and then the and then the SSS value. And so we combine uh, all the stuff on him. Makes it way way lighter on uh, <laughs> when it comes into into Maya. So he has multiple transitions going on. One is to go from the black to the the white skin, mm -hmm. and that's all the stuff in between. That's what I, I use uh, all those masks. I'm also doing some transitions on the belly area, and that's what I'm I'm using uh, those white and ma uh, black masks for. But I also use those masks for for many things to to control spec individually on on spec to control the roughness uh, individually. So I keep linking that stuff in Mari. Um, to, right, to, right, right. to use that everywhere. Mm -hmm. The way I set up this guy was a, a, a really big Mari exploration that I was trying to do on on, on white monster skin. So um, I was trying to do as much as I could in, in Mari at this point. Thanks for watching our video. That's it. Don't forget to like or to dislike it if you're into that kind of thing. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And remember, if you want to watch the full interview with Ben and Sam, I will leave a link to that in the description of this particular video. Until next time, everyone, take care.